last year, this week, I welcomed everyone to the first episode of Living Your Life with Leanne Lang. It was uh, a very scary and exciting time. I had never done a long form interview in this format, and I actually really had no clue how it was going to turn out. Um, I was, though, really comfortable heading in because I knew that my guest and the content was going to be great because I knew the guest and the content so well. And so it was incredibly fitting that that first one was going to be with someone who I'd interviewed for years on CTV Morning Live, uh, Dr. Sean Murphy. Uh, And so we figured on this very special year anniversary, why not bring Dr. Murphy back? So welcome to this episode of Living Your Life with Leanne Lang, the podcast brought to you by Extension Marketing. And for more information and for that free consult, please head to extensionmarketing.com. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I didn't interrupt. That was really, really good. <laughs> I've gotten kind of used to these yeah, now a like, year in. I just rolled off the tongue. Yeah. Good oh. for you. It's so nice to be here. And, and Okay. Yeah. It was funny because when you first started a year ago, we were in a very different setting. Were we ever? We yeah. were in kind of like this little office space kind of hidden in a corner so we could try to make it as soundproof as possible. That's right. And now we're actually in this beautiful soundproof studio. This is a beautiful studio. When you walk into this extension marketing building now, it's incredible. Like it's colorful and it's it's all been renovated. And there's all <laughs> kinds of people working in the background. When, and you and I were in there the first time. It was one person and a camera and, and we were sitting at a desk, which is fine too. But but to see how far it's come in one year is incredible. Pretty nice. It is. Yeah. And Veronica is now comfortable. I mean, do you remember she was like sitting on like she had this like little stool in the corner. Yes. And now she's got her little, <laughs> she's, she's behind glass. She's sipping her coffee. She gets to work on her computer at the same time. She looks so comfortable. Right. But she, you know what I love is that she listens. She does listen. She's always listening. Like she, I, and I can always tell you know, we've done so many episodes together, like mm-hmm. when something interests her or her head pops up or, you know, like yes. I can, I can, and it, it's helpful because then you kind of know what's piquing interest in other people, right? Next thing you'll have a live yeah. studio audience then listening or something like really? that. Really? Yeah. And then we'll create this into like a big show and then Why we'll just not? make this into, you know, go from podcast back to television. You never know, well, right? You never know. That's what we were talking about before we started today is like you were bold enough, Leanne, like Way back then, I first I want to apologize for my cold. I came back from Mexico. Oh, now you sound sexy. I'm stuffy. Yeah, so this is my. And you were back at Hard Rock, by the way. I saw. I I got you on. I know, but because originally my suggestion had been to the the Hard Rock in Fuji, Canada. My life. And you've gone back a couple of times. We have. Yeah. Yeah, it's our favorite place now. And you said you will see. It's your favorite place, but we're going back. uh, Are you? We're going back. We're going to a wedding. Oh, at so that nice. hard rock Punta Cana over March break. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So the okay. um what we're talking about. So then yeah, so when you started this, I was I was so amazed that you were willing to do a podcast um and not a hundred percent sure where it was going mm-hmm. to go. You know, you just knew in your heart you're like, this is something I want to do and I'm and I'm bold enough to do it without having any idea where it's going. You know, and and I think that's that's something that more and more people need to do is is to just like you follow your lead and just say if it's on your heart, then do it, right? Like, so what was it that you found for you that was that got over that fear of initially starting out? You're like, well, I'm just going to do it. What do you think pushed you over the edge? Oh gosh, I, I was excited to do something. I was excited to be outside of my comfort zone. That's I think awesome. maybe that's probably the best thing is that you get you get to be incredibly stagnant or you just, you get into the flow and then things just become routine. Like I could do that show. I could do the four hour morning show. I knew every single second of every morning, like where things were like, I I mean, I can even wake up now and it can be seven 31 and I'm like, we are, you know, I know exactly where the show is or at seven 48. I'm like, I know exactly where it is. I think it was, it was um, kind of the challenge of, of doing something different and scary and having to relearn and readjust and kind of grow again. I think we, you know, there's a I point in your life when you're like, I need to grow. Yeah. You get comfortable and you get beige. We always talk about like around our house is like when you start feeling beige and, and mundane, it's time to ruffle feathers. It's mm-hmm. time, you know, and a lot of people don't though. You know, a lot of people are like, I'm quite comfortable where I am and I'm in a comfortable job and, you know, but people, they want to change the world, I think. And you do, and you want to do it in a way that's different and modern. And, you know, extension marketing has done that as well. And, and that's what I think I'm attracted to because they say, if you want to grow and you want to change the world then hang out with people that inspire you and you inspire me. Did you have you read that like the five people you spend the most time with? Mm-hmm. Have you read that one? I mean, like yeah. I'm reading so many different things now, and I, you know, I never once picked up an entrepreneurial book. No, that still those still scare me because I'm overwhelmed still at the amount of work that has to kind of get done, and I feel like half the days I'm not getting 
nearly anything or enough done um because the podcast has been great and the guest list i like i love listening like i love right. being in the podcast as it's happening you know like i'm yeah. like oh, and and I've, I've loved the guest it's about kind of getting that information out that it exists that there's stories to be told you know right so, and so like, what would pull you off though like so a lot of people they start and then they wouldn't be sitting here a year later you know, so like you now, here you are a year later with many more things planned ahead, you know, going into 2019. Yeah. So what stopped you, I guess, from pulling, being pulled off of your vision? Or are there things that you're aware of that do tend to want to pull you off a of vision, but you fought through them to help other people, you know, like, so how could I do this? And how could I get f further along like you have and deal with it for oh. a whole year? I, have, have we noticed that somehow the, the tables got turned and I feel like I'm being the one <laughs> interviewed right now? <laughs> how, Switch how, chairs. Um, how did this happen? Okay. I but will I be the guest on Dr. Murphy's yeah. podcast today. But it's it's no, interesting no, it's, to me because right, you're interesting Because to me. I, yeah. gosh, I have failed on a couple of, like, don't think that this has been easy. Okay. This podcast has been my passion project uh, and this is easy. Because I'm doing something like every Tuesday when I'm in this studio with my guests, like I am at home, like I am in my comfort zone here. Um, but I have had some pretty bad fails already of some of the other things that I've done and some of the other projects that I thought I wanted to do right. when I was kind of making that list of things that I wanted to do when I left the station. Yeah. And some of those have failed like miserably. So then what's yeah, and, one? And, and like what you, would be one? And then um, how did you get back on track? So... So you try something. And okay, like, oh. it's not that it failed. No, okay, I should say this. It's not that it failed miserably. It felt that I was not being authentic to me. And as I was nice. doing it, I didn't feel good inside about what I was doing and where I was spending my energy. Um, so I probably one of the examples is I had been approached by a company to do a lot more brand and like brand influencer, like using my social media platforms for, you know products or different things like I mean there's an in, there's an industry out there of brand influencers on social media and and so I had a company and they were getting products and companies and you know I had to post and I just I didn't feel good doing it I didn't feel like it was I was doing my followers any um, Justice. I, yeah, like, I mean, I want them to come to my pages and find content or find ideas. Or if it's something I love to wear, like, this is my favorite sweater. Or this is my, you know, but not that I was representing brands that I wasn't using typically. I'm not a good consumer. Okay. And so I felt that I was being inauthentic wow. when I was posting. So I, I, I withdrew that. Like I did that for a couple of months and I so was, was like, that... nah. and, and I could have find like, I was hoping that, you know, it was going to be a way to be financially kind of have some income coming in sure and then I just was like I didn't feel good about it so, so I stopped it's a feeling like would you it was say, a, like I felt like it I'm was off. a this feeling right. I felt off okay I felt off That's and good. then I had to see you know to, when I was talking to this company being like it's just it's not me and I didn't leave my career of 20 years to do something that didn't make me feel really good wow so that was the one thing I did um and the other thing that I did too was I, I had been approached about doing these fitness videos, so this playbook app, and um, and I did that, and I was doing that for a couple months, but I didn't, I didn't like having content that people had to pay for. Oh, I see. When it was content that I could provide anyway, on my feeds. And that you do naturally. That I was doing right. naturally. And I also felt like there's enough trainers and there's enough nutrients. There's enough of those people out there who have studied and have done this that they're the ones that should be doing that. And then some, and I was just posting things that I like to do that I've learned from my 20 years of interviewing trainers and nutritionists and, you know, doctors. So um, I pulled back on that one too. Can I ask you a tough was, question? Cause, and that was hard because I had invested a lot of time into making the video like stuff. And now I'm just like, I'll just put it out on my platforms because I want to. Yeah. I have a harder question because I was thinking that like, what is attractive of um, what do you think is attractive to your listeners or to the people that follow all your social media? I mean, you're very, you're large everywhere. So what is it about you that people are attracted to? I have an idea what I am, but, mm -hmm. um, but I've always wanted to know. So somebody that grows as quickly as you are growing or. But I'm not so growing. That. No, it's been a very slow, slow growth. So, but it's steady. It's steady. And I'm very thankful that I, my audience is lo like, I have a good loyal audience, like people that listen to the podcast, the people that open the newsletters, yeah. um, they're a loyal, they're a loyal base, but it's not a, it's, it's not like it's been exponentially like, 
no. domino effect growing. That's it's really hard and it plays with your mind. How? That's been a big because you watch like you're watching. Okay, people didn't like this or people like this or people didn't like this post or pe- like it messes with your head. You lose followers. People follow you so that you follow back. But I don't play that game. Me either. Like I I follow people that I've interviewed and I that are my friends and my family. But right. so you know and then so you you see yourself go up and then you see twenty people because you didn't follow them back. Like it's a game. Like and it messes yeah. with your head. And I, I find a lot of us are just get we get caught up in in other people's perspective or perception right. or what we think other people are thinking see that's what i was getting at because i know you so i'm just going to interject there and say i know you to be one person that doesn't worry about what everybody else is doing and i think what's great about it i mean yes the the attack can be yes it can pull you there like because yeah. you are human you're like i wonder how else you know how many followers does this person have and how many people just follow that and but when you get right down to who you truly are from all these years I've known you, it's like, I'm just doing this because it's something that I'm interested in. I'm doing this because I'm a mom. I have two beautiful girls, an amazing husband, and this is how I live my life with them. It's just fascinating that people are interested in how I live my life. And that's like, I am. If I find that it's something that's going to benefit somebody else, then I, then I like to, Put on. Like my kitchen tips or like this is my like I'm working out a lot in the house now, just my schedule. So I'm doing things in the basement. If people don't have a gym membership or they can't do any like these are great ideas because they come from all the trainers that I've been interviewing. Like it's right. not, you know, like so that stuff I really like to do. Um, but it's definitely, you know, there's every day I've got these challenges yeah. and every day I just look forward to getting back into the studio so I can do my next podcast. That's awesome. Because yeah. yeah. you're very good at honoring people. I don't know if you know that because you're good at honoring your friends. You're good at honoring your guests. You're good at honoring extension media. Like when you believe in somebody or something, you have this amazing ability to honor them. And I, I find when you're in that mode and you're honoring people and, and you know, you know what I mean by that is like you really help celebrate people. And and so you, when people follow you or listening to your, your podcast, they're interested in what you do and, and how you pull that out of people. It's Okay, it's interesting that you say that because one of the projects that I am looking into is, is a lot of people asking about how to do interviews, mm. how to be interviewed, how to prep for an interview, how to get media attention, that kind of thing. And the one thing I think that I've gotten when I've asked people is, is that I, the, the question I always ask the guests right off the bat is what do you need from me to be oh. able to get your story across? Wow. Like so, and that's how I I, I enter every interview. Like, what what is it that I can do as an interviewer to be able to get the most out of your story, to ask you the right questions, to get the message that you want to get across? And I think that's what has has allowed me to be a, kind of had this extension and had this podcast go so well is that I want people to feel like they've been celebrated, like that right. their work has been admired or recognized or that their work is making an impression. It's very selfless. That's what I think is amazing. So when you put yourself out like that and say, I want Which to Which is help why you, this right yeah. now, this podcast, I'm going, okay, <laughs> I need to get to information right now for people. I don't need to be hearing yeah, about you know me. people are I, I need to you. be asking you questions to help people's lives right that's now. Right. You know, like as, as I'm thinking yeah. this, I'm like, okay, this is, I'm like, I'm thinking, oh gosh, I'm boring. Like, let's get no, to your not, information. That's what it feels like for other yeah. people. And I think, you know, when, don't you, you know, you're nodding in the booth there because people do want to know, how did Leanne do that? How how can I do what she's doing? How do I have that ability to to grow like her? Like, how does she stay so consistent? Does she not deal with challenges? And I think the realness of you saying, no, it's like a day-to-day challenge, but I stay focused because my Tuesdays are here. Mm-hmm. My, you know, yeah. videos in the kitchen are then. And it's like, th- a lot of people don't know those skills and talents that, that you have. And so... I, um, I think it's the athletic background. I didn't want to flip the table. No, 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 it's no. Hopefully people who are listening, yeah. you know, they're, they're okay with Learning. this right now. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think I think it's the year. athletic I think it's the athletic background right is that I was coached and I knew that it, you know this had to be done in training for this to be accomplished in a competition and I think I'd look at this life the same way these things have to be accomplished so that I can eventually at the end of the day be successful right so I'm 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 about checklists Are you? did I do this did I yes did I every do day, it right like, every day checklists yeah, yeah. Like, and 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 the worst thing is is that I'm not fulfilling those checklists so I feel very I'm scared right now like I'm not getting enough done. I'm not doing like, I don't know. We're into the new year. I right. have a, a fresh new kind of set of things I'm looking to do, um, you know, but it all comes down to no matter what's on that checklist by Tuesdays, I'm like, it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's podcast Tuesday. Well, you know, I get consistent. to do it. It's, this yeah. is where I'm consistent. And this yes. is where I know, you know what? This is where I know I'm, I feel myself. Right. So I know that Tuesdays are good. 
because I'm not having to figure out the rest of it. That That's whole awesome. entrepreneurial side of things. That's amazing. Which eats away at your brain. It does because we were talking about if you want content, it was like the, you know, a child's brain develops from right to left. So here's some information. Okay, yes, right? here are some tips for you. Yeah. Well, because okay. there's all the, the reason I'm asking all these yeah. questions is because I wanted to say, see how close you stay to vision mode. Because what happens is people fall out of vision. So when they're focused on vision, so whether it's health, like me, like I, mm -hmm. I want to, you know, somebody meets me as a chiropractor that does something different and they want to get better. So, you know, the new year brings, I want to lose weight, I want to lose my pain I want to lose a couple of pounds and I'm like okay let's stop talking about what you want to lose because your brain doesn't work in a negative perspective your brain develops like a child's brain develops from right to left so children everything is awesome okay so what we have to do is understand that your brain would only hear so if I said I want to lose weight all my brain hears is weight so 2019, it's our fresh start, fresh new you. You were saying you got goals this year. So I can't say I want to lose weight this year. I can't say I want to lose a couple of pounds. I want to lose the calories. I have to say, what do I want to gain? Well, I want to gain tone. I want to gain health. I want to gain joy this year. I want to gain more vision. I want to gain more structure. Um, and when you say that, your brain can actually condition your nervous system to fall in place to provide that for you. It doesn't work in a negative. So what happens is as the brain develops from right to left, if we go back to embryology, so every child, if you think, they touch things with their hands and they bring it to their mouth, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's where those sensors are the most. As we age, the left side of our hemispheres, our brain develops more. And the left side is all the decisions, the, the heavy weight, the, the stuff that squishes us as people, the, the fear, the anxiety. It's all left brain. It's all mathematical computation. The left brain constantly tries to give your right hemisphere an answer to some sort of dream it has. And if it's, if it's not willing to be grandiose and big, it'll make you play small. So you see what I'm saying? So it's really important to know that in order for you to keep achieving a vision and a goal is to get into your right brain more often. So as a functional neurologist like me and a chiropractor, that means that you have to play more. You have to laugh more. You have to have fun more. You have to think, what do children do? Well, they touch things. They look at things. They explore with their mouth. And what does things taste like? Or how do they smell? Like I think of Rachel when she was little, my daughter, and she would notice sounds more. Like she'd say, we'd go for a walk in the rain. And she'd say, daddy, do you hear that? And I'm like, <clears throat> what? Well, just how the rain sounds in the puddles. You hear that sound? I'm like, yeah. She goes, I love that sound. And like, or Christmas morning, she'd hear the crinkle of the, the paper. Do you hear this, dad? And I'm like, what? And she's like, how that crinkles? I like that sound. And just, so she's just turned 18 years old this Christmas. She says to me, <clears throat> we're decorating the Christmas tree. And she says, do you hear that, dad? Which brought me right back yeah. to when she was a little wee. I'm like, hear what, honey? And she goes, the, the the real glass Christmas ornaments, you know, that sound when they, that tink sound. And she's like, she tried different ones. She goes, do you hear that? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, I love that sound. That to me is Christmas. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, honey, like you're still doing that. I said, no wonder you're going after your dreams. Like she's at Wilfrid Laurier University. She's involved. Everybody loves her because she's like this big childlike view of the world. I, I know that's what you love about me is because the longer yeah. I can stay in that right brain, that joy, that creative side, that like when then you see all these visions. Like remember Leanne when we went for breakfast? Okay, like at the beginning of oh, last gosh, year. Oh, gosh, yeah. And mm -hmm. we just got brainstorming. And be like, you know, like, what else can we do? And like idea after idea. And you're like, I'm writing them all down. Like, because and I was writing them down, too, because when you're, again, with congruent people that are in that right brain hemisphere of like the little kid things, like roll down a, like a snowy hill, toboggan, make snow, you know, like color, like all those things. If you're having a struggle in your new year, what I want people to understand is get back into that big childlike view which lights up on the science side your right hemisphere which overruns that left brain heavy weighted fear induced i gotta get these things done the left brain all that stuff and there's a point for that but we got to get more right brain and what i see as a healthcare provider is in when we're taking care of people their right brain has gotten squished away They've either gone through a divorce, they've been hurt, they've been wounded in life, and they're disappointed. And now they're just so on the left brain of going through their everyday, like, unfortunately, checklists, unless mm -hmm. they're joy-filled checklists. But they're like, I just, they're trying to get the things checked off, and they and 
if it's in a left brain perspective, then they feel overwhelmed that they're not getting them all checked off. And you just said that. If it's from a right brain perspective, they're full of joy because they're like, I got three things checked off. <laughs> One of them was I wanted to make a really good lunch for my kids to go to school. And I put banana shaped minions in their lunch. You know, and it was ridiculous. But they're like, Dad, like, why do you do that? And I'm like, Because it's just something that was important for me today because it keeps me in a vision perspective, a joy filled childlike perspective. And in that perspective, my brain can work with weight loss, but it'll look at tone. It'll look at calorie loss as better calories. It'll look at losing the fat as gaining muscle, you know? So I think the reason a lot of people in their new year have a struggle is because they're trying to lose. They're trying to work with their left brain and no goal will ever be achieved using your left brain. <laughs> I, like, it's almost like I'm trying to like, now I'm trying to visualize like in my head, like the two a, hemispheres, the two he like I'm actually right. trying to figure, you know, it's a I, like I am like I, I cause you never realize I, I could never differentiate when I'm using right a certain left. side. I can you, like, yes, or, really? there's a couple ways you can tell. I mean, as a healthcare provider, we watch for head tilt, which is amazing. So somebody would tilt their head. They like the research is very, very fresh and new. So it's going to sound, I'm going to, I don't want it to sound Is this sound something that hokey. you've been working on? Absolutely. Because so you're 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 all, constantly evolving, and I know absolutely. that you're you're taking court, you're doing all these other things. Is this right. one of the things you're focusing this on? This is functional yeah. neurology is the so, thing right now. Okay. Is everybody wants to. What get is in it on. called? Functional neurology. Functional neurology. So what it means is studying the nerve system in how we function. Like it was re like, you know, you can be a neurological doctor and nobody understands what you're talking about. But if you use it as a functional neurological doctor, meaning that you're going to look at how people behave, how they present themselves to the world, their posture, all those things are representative of what hemisphere they're using, how they're feeling inside, how the nervous system is working and all those things. And we can use all these little secret tools on and looking at, so you're tilted. What? Oh, Who's calling Dr. Murphy? That's, I'm going to shut that <laughs> off. So then the idea is, so one of the things in functional neurology they say, and it's not 100% perfect, but it's very close, is the way we tilt our head. So imagine if you tilt your head to the left and you present your right hemisphere. So you're present, your right side is higher right now. Okay. okay. That would mean that you are in a loving state. That means that you're really getting what a person's saying, that you feel very warmed, that you're really, you know, you're like when you look at your kids, you'll think like you'll try this. When, you know, people listening in their cars, they'll be sitting there looking at themselves in the mirror. My, is my head tilted left or tilted right? If it's tilted left, your right side is higher and that means you're in a loving state usually it means that you're in a creative state it means that you know you're full of life and joy okay my hands up like okay. i'm in a classroom like i i'm very thankful right now that i'm always sitting on this side mm -hmm. and i'm always looking at my guests this way right. and with i'm always especially in this in this room i'm always in that that way right left yeah left is down left right is, is down high. right is up because as I'm looking at my guests so I feel better thank god I never when I first came into this room sat on the other side because that would have been not that would have been a disservice a disservice this, yeah that's right and see and you naturally selected that and so the the teachers there's the major gurus in the world Dr. Carrick is one Dr. Michael Hall is another one these guys are the guys that studied this stuff this is the stuff they use to help Sidney Crosby so remember when he went through a concussion yes. and nobody could solve it and so it was Dr. Carrick and those guys that went, got together and said, we have to balance, like, so that in a concussion, your brain has been damaged. We have to balance the hemispheres. We have to deal with the nervous system in the neck to help that. But it was one of the only ways that got him back on track. It helped him heal quicker. And so now everybody wants to know, well, what did those guys do? Like, how come it was so successful? And it's been this underground, underpinning neurological thing that people have been wanting more of. And so I just keep studying it because it's fascinating to me, like, you know, for, um, another Way. Okay, so, so one so one thing that we're looking at is the way in which you tilt your head. Right. Does it matter if you're at the office or the way you hold your phone and mm -hmm. you have a, a side? Does that have It does matter because you can have a physical outcome of just poor choices, you know? You could have an injury that just you have to tilt your head to the right or left. But it's when an otherwise normal healthy person as they're sitting in class, you'll watch people. So if they don't understand, they'll mm -hmm. tilt 
the left side up. So they'll tilt to the right. And this is what they've done. So with Dr. Michael Hall, I was in the class in Toronto. And as he was explaining this the first time, we were all tilted to the right because we're all sitting there and he goes, see, you guys aren't understanding this because you're and, we, and when he brought it to our attention, a class of 100. Could you see all, that all of you like <laughs> almost so... all of us were tilted to the right? And we're so, like, well, and, we and... don't understand it. So he goes, but you'll see as the day goes on, your head will slowly tilt over and you'll present your right side because you'll be warm and fuzzy. You'll see that you're like, this is this I'm starting to get. Okay. I feel healthy and happy. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at my you know my my grade five Jamie sitting in math class right now, and I go okay. to the teacher. Listen, look at I say you say to teachers, look at at your students, see where and and see and see where at. their heads, yeah. and then see if they're over this course of the class or the day it changes it shifts. Right. And I watch it in people, so yeah. I'm studying all the time. So example, when I'm in interviewing somebody as a new person coming into the office and and I'm watching, if they're tilted that way, I watch for that. If their head is falling forward, I watch for that. What is, what's falling forward? Falling forward means that the person's just feeling overrun. Like, so normally your body inhibits, so um, inhibits meaning it prevents your head from falling forward because it's just unnatural. But when you're overrun, it can't inhibit that anymore and your head starts to fall forward which is a, it's a person like you see, like you never see a homeless person with their chin up, dancing up the street, they're squished down. So there's an actual neurological reflex. So when somebody feels overrun, they actually look like a little fetus. So the place that a baby was safest was in their mother's womb, which they were all curled up in a little ball. So when we're stressed or we're anxious, our head will fall forward, our shoulders will roll in, we'll squish down because that's, and reflex that your brain remembers, this was the safest position I was ever in in my life. So the worst, like, so imagine when somebody scares you. So you're coming around the corner and say, mm -hmm. I was hiding and I jump out and go, boo. And you wouldn't jump up and lift your chin up and your arms go out. You would most likely crawl into a little ball and fall. Be that's the reflex I'm talking about. So wow. when we're overrun, so if you watch for things like that in people, like you're like, and so you can ask the person, are you doing okay? And they're like, no, I I'm actually feeling kind of down. And they're like, how did you know that? Like, do I look tired or whatever? Well, you might look tired, but, but I noticed your shoulders are rolled forward your chin is forward and and you're tilted you know whether your right side's tilted down you don't really understand what i'm saying and and i can tell that and so yeah you don't tell the person all that stuff mm -hmm. but it's a nice way to quickly assess how somebody's doing i mean and the better you get at it you you know in your spirit you're like you know what i know the person was down today i could feel it was a different energy people talk about energy all the time but there's uh, what i was saying is there's a physical science that you can see in how somebody's posture and head tilt and and other things will show how they're feeling and and it's a very great way to help somebody get out of that. So if I have a student, I had a student the other day, um, he was stressing about going away to school and feeling overrun. I don't know what I want to take. He's going to university for the first time. And, and I listened to him as a doctor and I understood he was feeling overwhelmed. His parents say, we don't know what to do. He's locking himself in his room. He's only playing his game. He's not happy. So what I did as a doctor, one of the things I did was I adjusted his spine, which is very important because you want to have healthy posture there as a chiropractor. But also then what I got him doing was talking about how he's going to decorate his dorm room. What what clothes are he gonna was he gonna bring? The community that he's moving to, what's one thing that was gonna be that he was gonna have on a list that he really wanted to do? Because usually the uh, student would pick a community in an area that they want to do something like whether it's a farmer's market they want to go to, or there's an amazing bar or a skating rink or whatever. And so what happened in those conversations, as he started talking about his vision for what was going to happen, all of a sudden he started to lighten up about school because he was in that vision again, instead of feeling overwhelmed and everybody keeps asking him, what are you going to study? What's your major? And he's like, I don't know. That's all left brain. <laughs> I get him talking about all the things that a little kid would talk about. What color is the room you're going to be in? Are you bringing your favorite pillow? Are you going to use your Star Wars comforter? Or are you going to get a new one as a 19 year old? You know, and he's like, well, I'm not bringing my Star Wars, but I am going to have a, a Yoda or whatever, you know, like yeah. little things like that. And that's how you can get people out of that. And then they can start dreaming and then you can have a better conversation. Okay, I, I'm sorry that I'm going to bring this in because you talked about, you know, the posture and how people are and you have this kid who your parents were saying locked in a room playing video games right how much are you seeing a change in the posture of our youth mm. based on their devices and their video games and what i would think if they're getting into these postures that is there a correlation hmm. between what is happening with the posture and the spine and to what's happening with their development Absolutely. Or how they're feeling. It is massive right now. So the, the superficial is, oh, you have text neck. Well, there's so much more neurological uh, going on in behind the scenes. So for example, you've got a child that's sitting in front of a game. Um, like I talk about the right brain and left brain. Yeah. The right brain is that vision. That's that big kid version of everything. 
a right brain development needs people. So again, if you think of a baby that develops right to left, okay, so their hemisphere develops right brain first, left brain second as they age, the right brain, they need mom. They need interaction with kids. They talk about play groups. They need that for healthy right brain development so that they can be creative. They know they fit in in the world. They have the right hormones that go with the right brain. In a child that then locks themselves in their room and they start playing video games by themselves, so they've been isolated, they know that... Um, um, Left brain development um, requires like like when you nod yes, that up and down motion, like, you know, or you're scrolling a cell phone screen, this over develops a left brain. So as I'm saying this to you, Leanne, I'm nodding and I'm scrolling as if I'm looking down at a cell phone that actually overwhelms the left side of your brain and actually brings out that anxiety, that fear, all that stuff that comes from the left hemisphere of the brain. So the way we combat that is we say to our son, Callum, he likes his games. We love that he communicates with his buddies over over his headset because we said like every time he's been on his game I'll say to Calm was there anybody else on your game well yes Aaron was John was I'm like great and I could hear him laughing so there is a social part of it so that combats some of that so yes it's right we get him a better chair and he can only sit and play his game from 2 30 to 4 30 max that's the total he can go less but he can't go more two hours is the most and then if we find that it's getting that his his uh, creativity is going down we watch him like so if he's not doing fun things outside or he's not coloring or doing interesting creative things then we say it's time to take a break from the game and let's get outside we're going to ski let's get out we're going to bring your friends over and we're going to talk and play a board game or whatever you have raised your children in a health aware uh, household right um where family time family activity uh was all mandated from a very early age that's right what happens in the families where that wasn't implemented early on or you know just wasn't part of the the daily function of the family and yet they're in these situations and now it's like okay you're realizing there's a an issue um but how do we change it how do we change it this podcast is brought to you by extension marketing they're a new breed of marketing agency that acts as your virtual marketing department designing and implementing cost-effective marketing strategies that will grow your business I can speak to this personally as I've been using the extension marketing team to help me launch and grow my business. Founder Pat Whalen has been a lifesaver for me, a genuine coach guiding me along the way into uncharted territory. Tell them you're a friend of the show and receive a free one hour consultation. Check them out at extensionmarketing.com. You got to start now. Like, and it's like, so that's that same, that's a great question. That's why you're a great interviewer because that's the stuff that goes on inside you. Because you said to me, just as a side note, you said, um, you have a checklist, but you get to the point you're like, I, I feel because there's too many things or how do I start? Like, where do I even begin? It seems overwhelming. And I always say to people that say that one step at a time, let's just pick one today. So when a parent says, oh my gosh, like yesterday, a lady from up the valley said to me, uh, my son can play that game all night, all day. And I'm like, well, then you as a parent need to step up mm-hmm. and set a boundary. It's, it's that, you know, as well as I do, that's unhealthy, but he seems to have so much fun. I'm like, right, but it's not helping his development. So then the secret is I have to explain these things of why, why isn't it a good development? He seems to laugh. He seems to be competitive, but he's also got ADHD in school. I mean, because in, when your left brain, one of the other signs in children, when your left brain's being overdeveloped, they can't make eye contact anymore. They don't have that warm, fuzzy hormone going on that comes from the right side, that creative side. So they can't look at people eye to eye. So watch, is he looking at you eye to eye? Is he not? You got to put limits on that game. You got to get more in his face or her face and react. And, and just sometimes just spending time, just lying beside them on their bed and say, what are you doing? Nothing. And they might be unhappy because they're not playing their game for the first day. But like, well, let's think of something else we can do. And think of creative things, joyful things. What would you do as a child? Like my sister, who's four years older than me, got me outside all the time. We played badminton. We laugh. And she was like all those things. So I learned social development from her. But some kids are by themselves at home and parents can't keep up. So I'm like, you are now that person that has to think of. I can't let them sit in front of that game forever. So you have to start with one step today. Set a boundary of time. Okay. It's 2.30 to 3.30 or 2.30 to 4.30. That's it. What else when you were in these classes that so neuro neuro functional neurology functional neurology Mm -hmm. um, what else are you studying so that you're implementing when your patients are coming in so I mean so much of what we had discussed over the years and in that first podcast was um, getting to the root 
right. root cause mm-hmm. of of where the issues are. That's that your right. people you're you're not people aren't coming into your office just to get cracked no. uh, an adjustment <laughs> <laughs> and, and walking out. Like don't think no. that's gonna happen because you're gonna have a thousand questions. Because right. for you it's about getting to the root cause of the issue. Mm-hmm. What is what has this course then or what you're studying enabled you to do with the with patients that are coming in with the everyday still issues that they're dealing with. Mm, that's awesome. You know what it's done? It's, it's given us the opportunity to give healthy exercises for a person to use at home with the understanding that, that it's actually influencing their neurology, not just, well, I'm stretching my left arm to get my shoulder to go back, or I'm, I'm looking up at the sky to try and correct the curve in my neck. If you help people understand that it's a stimulus of the nervous system, like there's a reason that you're um, sitting forward head posture, your shoulders are all squished in, you've got no abs anymore, you've got tight hip flexors. Yes, it's from sitting at a desk, but you need to know there's a deeper reflex going on. It's not just that you're sitting at a desk, but you're actually sitting at a desk and you're unhappy. Or you're sitting at a desk and you feel fearful that they're doing job cuts. So it squishes you down even more. So when you help a person realize that their brain is involved with their health and mm-hmm. how to ad- address the brain it's fascinating like so we were taught um so one of the things so somebody says like you know you're you're supposed to have a curve in your neck that actually looks like a banana going backwards so it's supposed to curve you know forwards in your neck and that would be normal posture but when we look at x-rays most people that are in a desk job or have been injured or high stress it goes the other way they have a reversal of that curve so we could say to them in the basic way well we want to bend that back well that's too basic that's not that's not going to work but if you say you know one of the ways we can get that curve to come back is to help you play again help you do things that are creative like a a painting and a wine night you know when they do those like paint and wine but he is still still people want to come in and get the quick fix that's right no no no. i just want you to fix my neck so that it goes back right and for for somebody to walk in and for you to say go have a glass of wine Mm -hmm. and go paint yeah, it's and not I, the first that's, step. <laughs> they're going, yeah. okay, so this doctor's a little wacko. <laughs> he is wacko. Right? Yeah. And you know what's crazy, though? The wackier I can be, the busier we are. So the crazier you can yeah. be, and people like, so then they go, how are you getting those results? So I let the results dictate the whole courses of care in our office. So yes, we're going to assess their posture and I'm going to meet the person where they are. So they're coming in and say, well, I've got a reversal of my neck, but how's it going to help my shoulder pain? I'm like, well, we're going to adjust your spine to allow it to move. That's all for me. The way I look at an adjustment of the spine as a chiropractor is we're trying to stimulate the spine so it will move. I'm just trying to get it to the point where you can be healthy again. I'm not healing you. I'm not going to jam your head back and give you some fancy brace on day one so that you're going to see all of a sudden be your posture is going to look good but you're in this ridiculous thing that you'll never wear we're going to start out with a series of adjustments so that you're going to get movement again in your spine you're going to get areas of your spine that have been jammed together for most of your life whether from birth or whether you hit your head i had a lady yesterday her her three-year-old son was dropped on his head over christmas by her sister was running up the stairs and she was carrying him upside down as a joke and Mm -hmm. she slipped (gasps) and dropped him on his head and so who tells me the story when i walk in not her but her three-year-old son i had my like and he was all excited to tell me that he fell on his head. I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I said to the mom, he needs to be in here to have a proper spinal assessment. Has he ever been assessed? She goes, no, but I watched him all night. It was Christmas Eve. And I said, boy, doesn't that put a damper on your Christmas Eve? Mm. Wondering if your son's going to have his eyes roll back in his head. And I said, that's why I'm a chiropractor. That's what I want people Did to understand. Did you see this, the child? Yes, yesterday. So he's actually yeah. booked in this week to see me. Because I said, we're going to have to do a proper assessment. And she's like, but he doesn't have any symptoms. He seems to be okay. And I'm like, right. But we're gonna, we wouldn't know until they show up. Okay, so, so back to your question. So mm-hmm. spinal care, then we start talking to the person, what else can I do at home? Is there any exercises I can do at home? I'm like, yes, you're going to want to turn your head left and right. Well, why do I want to turn it left and right? Well, because that's how your curve gets better in your neck. They don't need to know that I know the neurological side of it behind mm-hmm. why it's going to. They think it's just an exercise that they're turning their head, but I know it's a developmental thing. They don't realize that their head's forward or their shoulders are forward because of it's a neurological reflex because they're stressed out. They think it's because I sit all day. They don't have to know what I know. I'm only telling you because you want the inside scoop. But a patient coming in, they just need to know that I want them to do it. And if they do it, then overall, if they want to dig in deeper, I'll tell them, well, do you know why? It's actually neurological. It's not that you're just jamming your chin up towards the sky and it's going to make a difference. And I think the more we understand and how our bodies function, it's better. (laughs) 
take, take talk another 30 seconds as yeah. I like do my You're turning your head. I'm like yeah. turning like, my you head. You got better posture already. Oh my God. Well, yeah. you know what? I, I am noticing, like I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think, like I'm, I'm envisioning how my kids are sitting or how right. I'm sitting during the day or like, you know, being places that I've gone. Mm-hmm. I can tell with people, like I, I can like, or you can usually tell, especially a parent, you can tell when your child's feeling a certain way. Right. Because you look at them. Yeah. But now that makes sense. It does. When they're in that kind of little crawled up little ball. Right. And my job is is like on this or anywhere. Yeah. It's like we can go as deep as a person wants to go or we can keep it as basic as yeah. they want to go. And I find the things I'm fascinated in, though, like I like to know why. Like I'm always, well, why does that happen? Why do we carry ourselves like that? Why is everybody that's on a cell phone now stressed out? Why is ADHD on the, on the rise? Why is it that people can't make eye contact anymore? Why would people rather text than talk? You know, it's because our, we're all left brainers anymore. Like we've all lost that spirit side of our heart, our good heart, our right brain development of being crazy and different. Like we've lost all that. And that's why I started asking you questions on on the beginning, mm-hmm. because I'm like, well, what made you like you? I'm sure you have people like, are you sure your podcast is going to take off? Like, you sure that's what people are doing? Why don't you want to be back on TV? Why did you leave TV in the first place? I thought you retired, but now you seem like you want to go back. Like I thought it was retirement <laughs> from it. You know, how was I going to retire at 42 years of age? <laughs> I know. People do not understand local television does not pay that well. I know. Yeah. You know, like, people, I was like, what? Right. No, it's not getting up at 3 30 in the morning anymore. Yeah, look, I'm not doing no. this. No. Yeah. Um, uh, gosh. And you know what I love too? And, mm-hmm. and I know just, uh, but I love that the guests that are get have people who are listening and who are calling. Right. Like uh, your podcast went, like you called me. They're like, I've, I've had tons of calls. Yeah. Like people, you and know. And months later, people yeah. are like, I was just listening to you. I'm like, where? And they're like, oh, it was a podcast called <laughs> Living Your Life. And I'm like, oh, I said, yeah, that was, you know, that was almost like five months ago or four. Yeah. And, I'm like, and they're like, I really, really enjoyed it. And there's all kinds of them on there. I'm like, yes, there is. I said, Leanne's interviewed some amazing people that have done amazing things like yeah. that have either burn victims or in the research for memory and concentration yeah. or dementia, like those things, like they're like people I always find people want to be a doctor that's it I always did and I find people want to learn about health health is the number one google search it's like I never want I don't want to be a doctor no no never there was never a single part of me why not but because I believe that there are really there because there are passionate people who do okay so what do you want to be I want to be the person to ask them all the questions. <laughs> I get to sit here. I didn't have to go to school for eight years and do my internships and, and do like, I listen to their stories and my goodness, the work and the studying that they have to put in. Yeah. Like I love that I can sit here and learn from them right. by asking them, you know, an hour's worth of questions. Cause trust me, every single person that's walked out of here, I have made an adjustment or I've listened to a tip that they've had or yeah. so there's enough information that you can get out of these individuals who have done the hard work right who deserve to be making you know you know have the life that they have from the work that they've put in but i no, i could never do it yeah no. and you know the point of this whole reason i, I don't to think down is i that, i mean you do because that's your background yeah. i think many of us don't well you know and it's funny because that. you said everywhere i go then it's like an example like um so if we're at a wedding reception inevitably within three statements health comes up And I'm absolutely so and as soon as somebody like I just said to Christine, I love going to Mexico. She goes, why? Because I said, I love meeting new people and not having to be a doctor because I can just meet them and be me. And I can just be that childlike guy that loves to play volleyball on the beach and roll around in the sand and have fun and laugh and and meet people for who they are and learn about them. So I completely understand how you feel because you're like, you know, I like to learn about people and I'm Mm -hmm. interested in people. And then but then on that third statement, somebody says, well, well, a good example, we were in way in Mexico and the lady under, heard through Christine that we met this family. And she said, my wife said, oh, my husband's a chiropractor. And I'm like, hon, why would you say that? Because now questions within they the did. next day, we're walking up the beach. She goes, well, can I ask you a question? I'm like, what? What do you think about acupuncture? And I'm like, here we go. And it starts again. And, you know, and not that I'm like, I love answering those questions too. But man, it's so refreshing just to be a real person too. You know, and just have other interests in joy and music. Right. And, but and, that's the yeah. thing that I'm saying. I Most know. of us don't want to be. We just don't didn't have it in us to study and become that doctor. We just appreciate it when we can talk to someone who has the information. Yeah. Uh, and then and can get it out of them. Right. Right. And get it out of them. Yeah. <laughs> get it out like, of tell them. Tell me the truth. Without what paying the two hundred and fifty dollar yeah. visit, right. when they're like, come yeah. to the office. Yeah. Well, can you just tell me good. over the phone? <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah. no, not so much. But no. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, gosh, that's, that's awesome. cool. Yeah. Um, have there been any um, changes? So, I mean, this um, has been one place of study that you have spent uh, quite a bit of time on. I've noticed, too, that you speak a lot. I do. What when you When you do that, what are you speaking about or to? Mm. Or who are the people that are coming to listen to you? Well, there's business leaders all over the world that listen to me, I guess. If I'm lucky enough to be invited to go somewhere and speak, I always feel so honored again. Um, because I I think there's, there's to answer that question, I got to tell you, there's four things that prevent me from being anything. One of them would be um, inferiority complex. I'd feel, who am I? Like, you know, another one's fear. Uh, another one's time. And then um, another one is that, like that internal dialogue that I have, like I'm very convicting of myself, like, oh, I could have done better. So when I do get asked to go somewhere, um, I have to get over all of those things before. And I have to realize that my story is different than yours and everybody's story is different. So everybody could do a podcast. Everybody could do the speaking that I do um, if they tell their story. And, and so... Um, so when I go and speak, I, I use, it depends on what the topic matter is, but if it's about leadership, we'll talk about breaking through the fear. And I look at things that I did to try to be more like if I had a dream in my heart that I want to pursue, well, how did I get there? You know, like how did I, how did it even get achieved? Because I was scared to death. You know, the first time I went on to TV for you with you, somebody asked me yesterday, they said, are you just a natural in front of the camera? I said, no. I said the, the month leading up to that, I probably I couldn't sleep. And then I threw up the night before I went there. And I was there, as you know, like two hours before I was even <laughs> supposed to be on because I was just it's very, very stressful. But there's a secret in that. So I probably the main story I talk about when I go and talk to people is that when you look for the fear in your life, you'll find your dream. So if you are really clear on what are you scared to death about right now, that should be your next step. So when you have your checklist, Leanne, and you're like, okay, there's 10 things on there. Um, number nine is I'm scared to death of. Well, then that's what my next step is. And so for me, that's what I do. And I just, I've gotten to the point where I could care less what people think of me. I want people to see that I'm free of concern of what they think of me because my whole life is I want to honor them. And if they don't get it, that's okay. Cause I'm going to still honor you. I'm going to still love you. I'm going to still admire where you are. And so I look at, okay, if I'm scared to death to come down here today to talk to you, cause I really didn't know what we were talking about, but I thought that's gotta be what today is all about then. And tomorrow will be, you know, uh, something we're installing digital x-ray in our office. And I'm scared to death of that because there's a learning curve with that. I don't know how to use a digital x-ray machine yet or the computer software that goes with it. Cause I've been old fashioned using the old fashioned x-ray machine, but I'm going to do that tomorrow without a doubt. And it's in my schedule because that's the thing I'm scared of for tomorrow. How important is staying on top of, like, as you said, you were old school and using the old system mm -hmm. in the medical world. Mm -hmm. Like I want I think, you know, it was a uh, Dr. Coutinho from the Heart Institute. She said in three months, things are changing every three months. That's right. That's how fast you have to be on top of things and, right. and be reading every three months on the new research on the new things. Right. Has that been uh, essential for you? It has. That's an amazing question. I love that you asked that because for me, <clears throat> we have to do in our profession as a chiropractor, you have to, you have to do a certain number of courses to maintain your license. So then every two years you fill out this form and send it in to say, I did this many courses. So I qualified mm -hmm. for this. I'm always about 400 to 500% higher than what I needed. Because if I, I have a thirst for knowledge too, but I love to learn, but I also know that if I'm not learning that I'm in the wrong, if I don't want to read about it, if I don't want it, then I'm not doing what I should be doing. You know, so in our office, if, if it's something better that could be offered like function neurology, well, last year and the year before I spent lots of money and lots of time driving and taking the train to Toronto week by week to learn it. And then there's another course coming up in April. That's another five courses in Toronto again on function neurology. I'm going to take those because if I don't, I'm like, there's so much more I could offer people and I don't want them to be missing out. If it's better, mm -hmm. like you, like you hear, if there's something better, like extension marketing, there was a few things better some from last year to this year. It's massively changed now because they're like, if it's better, we're going mm -hmm. to do it here. And so I think in every profession, not just in medicine, but or in chiropractic, but in this and anything else, it has to be, you have to stay up on it. Like, that's why I was interviewing you today, because I, I listened to all your your podcasts and I can't tell you how many times it came to the question of like, well, I wonder what Leanne thinks of that, you know, and that your your opinion is a value of me as a listener. I want to know what you because I follow you. Mm -hmm. I follow your podcast. I like that you have great guests, but I like that you interject on what how you see that. 
because I then can identify with what you're saying. And I'm like, man, she stays right up on top of those things. And so it has to be that you're always learning, that you can provide something more for everybody all the time. Because of that, and because you had mentioned the doctors that you're studying with, Mm -hmm. uh, and you you bring Sidney Crosby's name in, and because Mm -hmm. so many more people are dealing with um, concussions now, right. or it's, it's more evident. People are, aren't just banging their heads and thinking, okay, in a couple of days, I'll get over this headache. Um, is that a lot of where the growth is or mm-hmm. are people more open-minded now to the treatments needed? Right. I think, uh, yeah, because right now you know, with concussions, it's the hot button topic. And there's always those. Like years ago, it was MS, you know, and everybody was coming up with different ways to treat MS. And other years through practice, I've been in practice 20 years. So there's always these hot button things that come up in the public and they come and go, you know, like think of West Nile virus. But so now, right now, it's concussions because there was a movie and, you know, and stuff. And so, but nobody really has clean, clear guidelines or they're, they're getting better, but of, okay, what is somebody that shouldn't be playing what is somebody that should be playing after concussion how bad is concussion it's very hard to Mm -hmm. assess so then these functional neurologists in the world started to look at okay how is the person functioning with a delayed neurology so if they've had a swelling around their brain from a concussion are they functioning differently now and how do we correct that how do we even assess Mm -hmm. it and so i was really interested in that um not just for concussions but just as everyday people, you know, how are they functioning every day? It has an influence in everything. So yes, it's a hot button topic. Yes. That's why I'm studying functional neurology right now, but I know it's deeper than just concussions. It's, uh, it'll address so many things and people that are just trying to get through life today. Okay. Let's go. People are just trying to get through life today. Okay. Let's do, um, cause I just looked at the clock. Uh, let's do top five things right now. People are coming in for. Okay. And your, if you can, like your quick, your, Let's do, we'll do a top five quick fix with Dr. <laughs> oh Murphy. <my> gosh. <laughs> then five. you're like, Holy. I had no idea what we were going to talk about today. So let's just, yeah. Put well, me on okay, the spot. let's, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I am putting you on the spot totally, okay. but because I think it's a new year mm-hmm. um, and I think everyone's got, as we mentioned, those checklists. Right. I think the one thing is, and I took that right from the top, like I remember everything we just talked about, but the, the, the losing. We're going to switch the mindset. Right. Switch the mindset right now. Everybody that comes in, we have to change their belief. I can't change their belief. So the way you change somebody's belief is you actually help them see yours. Okay. So that's number one. So somebody comes in, I don't believe chiropractic can help me. I'm like, okay, why not? And they're like, well... My mom went to a chiropractor and it was not a great experience or, um, and it's in every profession. I don't go to the dentist anymore because my dentist hurt me, whatever. So you're like, you have to help a person believe again. So you show them tools, you show them, um, examples of people that just like them, you, you help them understand the why behind it. How does the body work? So that's number one. Number two is I understand there's going to be questions and fear. So, but that goes to everything. So if you're most fearful about this, I help a person realize, then go after this. This must be the one thing you're preventing t- from trying to do. So we got to fix your fear. Then top three things physically that people are coming mm-hmm. in with right now is they feel like they're overweight and they're not digesting well, and it's causing their low back pain. They're like, well, I'm carrying too much weight. So until I get rid of that, I'm not going to get over my low back pain. And so I need to, I need your help with my low back pain so I can function again, so I can lose the weight. So I'm like, okay, well, there's twofold there. Yes, I'm going to adjust your spine if their low back is causing the problem and help you move better. But let's look at what you want to gain. See what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, we're not going to lose weight, but we're going to gain health. So your weight may not change in the first couple of months here with us, but you're going to be gaining health so that that will be a potential in the future. So that's a big thing. You mentioned digestive health, though. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of guests here and Mm -hmm. everything really the core of a lot of the issues comes down to the digestive system. Mm -hmm. Are you still of that? Do you see that mindset? I do. Um, I see that the digestion, that the the crap that we eat is not going to help us degenerate or is not going to help us regenerate good tissue. You have to put good in for your body to then use it to make tissue. So, but it's still the deepest thing we can get into is your brain and nervous system. They have to receive the information. So my brain's always assessing what's in my stomach. So you throw in an apple, your brain goes, okay, if it's got a healthy nervous system, it knows it's an apple. It knows it's sugars. It knows it's, it's going to have um, good, good uh, healthy sugars and it's going to have good healthy material that it can make eye tissue tomorrow to see. But if your nervous system is disconnected or your spine is misaligned or your, your neck is out of alignment and your brain doesn't get those clear signals, then you can throw in as many apples as you want and you're not going to digest them properly. You see what I mean? Mm. So I don't just go to digestion because it still goes back to the spine. I'm like, well, you have to have a healthy spine and nervous system in order to do anything. 
that's what's making your heart beat today. So we're going to want to make sure that's where it starts. And so I love my job because I'm like, let's go as deep as we can. Then yes, please do eat the right vitamins and the apples and the, the stuff that comes from the ground and the animals if you do that. But don't eat yellow number five or try to avoid MSG, BHC, yellow number six, red number five blue six you know those things your body doesn't know how is that to res- red number five what we find in licorice well uh, probably <laughs> yeah coloring because your body's like yeah. what do you want me to do with this now yeah. i think of you know poor corn chips that are like flavored so if you ever look at their ingredient list your body doesn't know what to do with that because it's so busy then managing the chemicals that are in there it has to get rid of those first before it'll ever take the corn out of there you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. so you're right digestion is important but we got to start with something more pure and go get the person healthier so that they can make those steps and strides to drink more water to eat better to to do whatever <laughs> Why did they... you look at me just well now? because no. a year ago you <laughs> talked about water so um and that's something children that you'd like to go back to that podcast a year ago now and it is re- I, well if people to... are just kind of coming in now i do hope that they go back to number one which yeah. people still do every day yes. um there was some great information there i mean there i was. remember we talked about gout and we like there were oh, so yeah. many things that we talked about that's right um because they were all pretty much based out of the book that you pretty much wrote based on right years and i no, segments well yeah years of segments and we wrote that book together partly by the what we've discussed but you're right it's like i called it the best natural healing tips i'm no author but what i looked at is i wanted in snippets in that book to show what people can do quickly you mm-hmm. know like how do i sleep how should i position on my at my desk like really quick answers because it's very simple if you keep it simple you know you can go really deep but whatever but it's uh but you're right and it's like so the topic of this one i'm thinking as we're going through this is really how do you have 2019 a new you and a new year you know and it's like i hope people from listening to you and i and also like the questions i had for you are learning like okay there's things i can do i hope people get that fearful thing i hope they realize that the brain and nervous system controls everything i hope they realize that if the more they listen to you they're going to hear somebody very similar to themselves drawing out of people that maybe like me get a little bit verbose and don't know really how to answer the question but hopefully have something of value in the mumblings that they go through right you have a gift land that helps focus people and helps honor them and helps them get to what people really want to hear and and i hope people do go back the past year and listen to all the great things that you've pulled out of people because you don't let people ramble you say okay that's fine and all (laughs) but people at home right now are thinking what is the point well that's i'm always in my head going there's i'm always thinking there's a person driving their car okay okay so hold me in so get me into like the way you always do so get me to the point what is the point today of your point yeah like why do you think i'm even here i think you're here because well, you're engaging, and mm-hmm. I think you inspire people that they are able to do things, even if it's the smallest thing. But even if today, um, so for me, if someone grabs something from this, I'm the head tilt. Mm-hmm. I will watch my children. I will. I will. I will think of them in class, and I'm mm-hmm. like, are they tilting left? Are they tilting right? I will yeah. look at them when they're sitting at the kitchen table, or we're having a family discussion. Like where. Where is that? I'm looking at God, when you when you made the reference to a homeless person. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever. You're absolutely right. I've never walked by anybody on sitting on the street who's sitting up, Happy head, as can be. head yeah. up, held high. No, yeah. they're in that they're in that fetal position. We go right. to that safety. So you know there are definitely things. I think that the things that you're studying right now it's fascinating. We are always trying to evolve and understand ourselves and and our habits and our behaviors. Um, and I think it's, you know, there are little things that people can take from this. Right. For sure. And where, so then can I ask you something? Mm-hmm. So like, this is the first one, like, or sort of our anniversary. Yeah. So then where are you going to go this year? I, you know what? My guests are, I mean, I'm booked for months, wow. which is what I, I'm grateful for. Like people are asking to come on the podcast and I'm like, okay, so we're booking into, um, April and May right now. You know, wow. like I, I have people that are wanting to get on and to share their information. So, um, I just want to be able to continue to have every week something different for somebody that yeah. they're going to be like, ah, you know, maybe this topic doesn't quite, but I'm going to give it a listen and find something interesting out of it. And I'm trying to do it so that every week there's something different. Like, I, right. I don't do, like, two back-to-back weeks of a doctor. No, no. No, because the next one that's coming in, I have a ketogenic uh, specialist coming in. Nice. Right? And then I've got Stuntman Stu's story. I mean, his wow. Stu Strong and, and ha- his campaign. And then I've got, you know, a therapist coming in, about a relationship therapist. We're kind of heading into that. It'll be towards Valentine's Day, right? So I'm trying wow. to trying to get things kind of all going. I mean, yeah, my list, I'm, I think my last just booked a guest, and it was for April. 
See, that's amazing. Yeah. So, and then to be honest, I think I gave myself one year to build the content. So, and I know I have a, a, you know, like a producer looking at the numbers going every single day, someone is listening to every single podcast that you have. So I know that we have a really engaged audience. So now if you're asking me that question, where am I going? Well, now I'd like to, now it's time to bring advertisers in and sponsors in and and have people that want to be associated with the show. Uh, to be able to say this is where it's growing, and Good this is you. these are the businesses that are on board or people who are listening. So, so wow. that's actually where I'm, you know. But I wanted to give myself one full year Which of building me. content, <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, yeah. Left. And I was talking right. to you, and I'm like, let's do the let's yeah, do the not? one year kind of the recap anniversary of where it all started. Yeah, yeah, because I feel like when I was coming down, I thought, well, maybe that's why I'm supposed to go down there is because, like, I'm very interested in if somebody wanted to do this, like I don't. But if somebody wanted to, how do they do it, Leanne? Like, what do they do if they wanted to do a podcast? Like, if they do they, what if they don't feel worthy? What if they, no, you know, they just they listen. They listen. Best, I think the best people who interview are the people that are listening. Good listeners. Like, and I would say to people, and I had students that would say, and they have like a list of questions that they want to ask. Like, yeah. you saw me, I didn't. I no, had, I had, <laughs> I had not one question, not but one you, question written down. You listen, hmm. and I would, I hate it when people would do interviews and then they would just go to the next question. Yeah. Like no, like there's no, like it did, it wasn't organic no, enough. No, like you. why are yeah. you going from that to that? They just said something really interesting. Follow up. Right. Like follow up on that. You they, you don't need to get to So I for me it's I just I listen. Hmm. And and I'm fascinated. That is fascinating. Cuz I it interests me, right? So right. if you asked me to talk about, you know, calculus right now, not so my, much. my 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 head would be tilted the other way. <laughs> the other way and yeah. I'd be I'd be tuned out. You know, it's yeah. it's I think it's what we're passionate about and I think that's that's the best awesome. thing to follow. I got to go out. Okay, did you, could you hear my timer kind of going, yeah. hey, you got, oh, look at that. Like right on cue. I even know. That's how good you I are. used to know my four minute segments with you. Like I knew them to Me the too. minute and now I can go to the hour. I just looked at my clock, everyone, 59, 51. And I knew that I had to wrap up. That's how much now I kind of, what the hour is like. That's how good and you are. And you know are. what's crazy is like I could totally go for two hours. Uh, like I used to do too. those four minute segments going, oh my God, there's like so much stuff we didn't get to. That's right. And now I do an hour and I'm like, oh my God, I could have gone for another hour. I know. Yeah. And it's, it's so, such an honor to be here. Yeah. I, I wanted to thank you and, and Extension Media too and just all the things that they're doing. It is so professional in here. I don't know if anybody ever gets a chance to see this like I did, <laughs> they, but they, it's amazing. I mean, Pat has been awesome to come on and, and, and from day one say, I believe in this podcast, I'm going to help you get it going right. and I'll sponsor it so that we can kind of do this and, and have the access to everything. So, and it, you know, yeah. and there's been some inter- interesting people that walked in this office now that I, and had no clue, right? I had no clue it existed, right? So, Wasn't it? It, Didn't you say when we first started this? So today you yeah. said the top five people to hang around with. You know, yeah, I did. So you like, have to surround yourself yeah. with people. Yeah. Like these, and that's, these people and that's here. challenging. Yeah. I, I, like in, and every day that you've got, you know, some. But I, I'm, right. I think it's because I'm reading. Yeah. Well, I read well, just one thing to add to that, then, yeah. and then because I know you're going, is the uh, if you're the smartest person in the room, though. You got to change it up. You got to change it up. Yeah. Yeah. Because in here, I feel so dumb. Like, because there's so many things going on in here that I don't have a clue what's going on in here. But this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good crew. And like, but that's why I like Pat, because he's talking about, have you ever thought about doing other offices, Sean? I'm like, Yes, but I never said it out loud till you came into my life, you know, but it's, it's, that's what they do here. And that's what you yeah. do for me and others. And I just love you for it. Cause oh, you are thank fantastic. You. Cause I'm yeah. about to go into meetings today where I'm going to feel like the dumbest person hey, in the room. In right and room. that is how I feel 90% of the time, <laughs> except for Tuesdays when I tape my podcast. Uh-huh. So that is your wrap. I'll feel good for today. Uh-huh. That is your wrap on uh, this year anniversary of living your life with Leanne Lang. Oh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Like, okay. And people find more information. I should, by the way, say, okay, Murphy Chiropractic yes. uh, out in Carlton Place. That's right. Um, you, are, you, I, are you still doing the show a lot? Are you still yes, on Yes, we're on CTV next Wednesday. Yeah. Um, talking about these things, how to get yourself into 2019, a new you, new year, but using health as the as the secret. And then uh, Murphy Chiropractic. Oh, yeah. So our website's murphyhealthcenter.com. Murphy. Murphy. Yeah, it's a Did health that center. No, but it's like Murphy Chiropractic is me, and we're in at murphyhealthcenter.com. Okay. Yeah. So if you're looking for more information, and I love last time that you had tons of people calling after, so oh, yeah, hopefully we'll get in. Oh, yeah, the podcast was massive. Yeah. Yay. Yay for you. <laughs> Yay. Uh, all right. Have a great day, everyone. And please be sure if you're, if, you know, please like, comment, paste, subscribe, let your friends know uh, as we continue to try to see this uh, podcast grow. Have a great day. 